Edge of Radio. On this episode, Missy and I are talking about tools for managing life's addictions. Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats. The show is about to begin. Finding Peace, the podcast where Missy and I talk about life skills that help us to find our inner peace and happiness on a daily basis. And today we have the interesting topic of talking about um, managing life's addictions. And we'll look at what we mean by that term and some of the skills and uh, things that we can do on a daily basis to manage that and keep our inner peace at the same time. But unless you have a great uh, background for your video, for those who are watching video, it looks like Missy is sitting outside in uh, a nice, maybe tropical location by the reflection on your window. Yeah, yeah, sunny Florida. Here we are. <laughs> And you're outside too, though. So, uh, or at least I don't know if that's a glass pane or a, a screen pane. Yeah, no, it looks like I could be outside. I'm, I'm in our enclosed porch area. Uh, it's just a little too much on the cold side here up north to um, be totally sitting outside. But uh, we should get warmer later in the day. So That'd be we'll nice. see what happens. That'll be nice. Yeah. Yeah, I think we're so, at the fine line of sit outside or sweat your you know what off or and and stay in the ac so i was like um you know what i'll be probably sitting outside today and maybe next week the <laughs> next time we do this i probably won't be <laughs> so yeah. very fine line no we're <laughs> we're we're in that weird area where you know two days ago it was in the 70s and then we had freezing rain the next day in in the oh, 30s geez yesterday and then we'll be back to the 60s today so wow that's yeah. that's where we are with the weather well i know that uh you have a background in you know uh, uh a clinical background in um the things that we're talking about today but i can't really pinpoint one person that i know who hasn't had some form of addiction touch their life Right. And, and uh, as you pointed out, you know, the first thing most people go to is, is alcohol and drugs, but we also have, you know, now we have phones and we have, you know, pornography, we have sugar and food and, and all kinds of things uh, that I'm sure I'm not even thinking of the work addictions, even, you know, that mm -hmm. um, I think that it's important to help keep your peace to talk about these kind of you know, tools that we can utilize when we notice that we're getting into that um, repetitive uh, need to do whatever it is that we're, we're doing. Right. And for the behind the scenes look, uh, Missy and I have, had been discussing for quite some time prior to hitting record of what we're going to call this, uh, because we really want to focus on the fact that all of us to varying degrees really have our own addictions and you know i really don't want somebody to look at a title and say oh well you know I, i'm not an addict or i'm not in recovery so this isn't a video for me because we're not just talking about you know the the legal drugs and alcohol issues uh but the other addictions that that affect our lives and what we mean you know by addictions and um yeah i feel so old when when i think about it but i, I started working in the field of chemical addictions uh which is clients with drugs and alcohol back in the early 1990s that seems wow. so old that, well, that doesn't make you old it makes you knowledgeable <laughs> it could um i like the term wise but there we'll go with knowledgeable uh, <laughs> i used to say for the longest time you know yeah i spent 20 years in in addiction 
uh, you know, work. And, and then I actually did the math and it's way more than that. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> You know, and it's funny, um, I was at an event last night and, um, you know, it's a, uh, an event that I do for my other business and, um, you know, they had goodies out and sugar and, and sugar is my, you know, I would say drug of choice, right? Right now is, is that that's one thing that I'm, uh, managing and, um, I love this lady. Uh, she came up to me and I, you know, I was like, oh, is that cheesecake? And she had this little tiny bite of cheesecake. And she was like, no, it's tofu. And I was like, is it really? And she was like, oh boy. Anyway, it was really cheesecake. And it was just a bite-sized piece. And she said, you know what? These, these little pieces are good for me because I get to remind myself when I eat this that if I have another one, it's not going to get better. It's the same. It's, you know, and I was like, that's a really good way of looking at things that, you know, like, you know, especially when it comes to eating or, or things like that, mm-hmm. like, you like, you know, smoking a second cigarette when you're stressed out doesn't help really, you know what I mean? It, or eating that extra bite or having a second plate full of food or whatever it is that doesn't make it taste better. It just kind of usually makes us miserable, you know? Right. And, um, so I just thought that was kind of very interesting, a thing that she pointed out and, and I wanted to share. Um, mm-hmm because that's something that, like I said, I experience, and it's a great outlook on, um, you know, we have these beliefs and, and I don't think that if we really look at what our beliefs are, then, then we have any way of changing them. Right. And I think just to keep this simple and very broad, when we look at addiction, it, it really is something that we're, using or doing that would keep us from experiencing life in the present moment. Mm, yeah, very true. Um, yeah. And of course, there's way more complication to it. But, but I, I think in, in the general sense that that's, you know, what it is that when, you know, maybe we're feeling stressed or anxious, you know, we, we tend toward the sugar, the sweets or, you know, just throw snacks in us as, as you know, uh, stress eating and, uh, you know, whatever that may be. And, and then some people may take, you know, certain drugs or whatever. But it, it's, you know, really, I think a lot of this deals with motivation, you know, be, because I, I get a lot of clients who will ask, you know, like, what's that fine line? You know, if I have a glass of wine every day with dinner, am am I an alcoholic? And, you know, my answer usually is, well, you could be, but you don't have to be. Right. Because part of that is what is the motivation for you to have that glass of wine, you know, every day? Um, Are you covering up stress? Are you trying to get rid of, you know, negative head thoughts, uh, you know, things like that? Or are you just like, you know what, gosh, this... In, I enjoy this and, and it, mm-hmm. you know, you settle into it. Like there's balance, right? You know, if it's yep. an escape that you're using it for, then likely it's not healthy, right? If it's just, you know, I would enjoy this, you know, mm-hmm. then that's, that's a different attitude to have about it. It's not a need. It's, it's not even a want. It's a pleasure. Yeah. You know, and, and there's really nothing wrong in, rewarding if you want to use that word you know our, ourselves for you know maybe we got through the day and you know how well or not well we got through the day we're going to have this glass of wine and kind of you know yeah wind down from that day and, and that's fine yeah. um the other thing I, i've asked people to do is if you're not sure stop the substance for a week mm-hmm. whatever you know, it is, or your action or whatever, just don't do it for a week and, and see what happens, you know, and, and for those who immediately give the pushback on doing something like that, yeah. then I right away say, you know, then you might want to examine because if yeah. you can not not do that for like a week, yes, there may be a, a deeper issue, which again, in the broad sense of addiction, I'm not saying needs treatment and all, but that, if, if that's the issue, then that's taking away your inner peace. Well, I, I went through a training and they would say, what has you basically, right? It's mm-hmm. controlling you. You're not controlling it. 
right? So, um, you know, and during these trainings, we were there for weekends at a time, you know, not succession, but, but, you know, we'd go for three days and then, you know, we'd go for a month and then we'd come back for three days anyway. And during those three days, they would ask you no smoking, no drinking, you know, obviously no street drugs. I didn't want you to do drugs at all, but, but, um, and they would tell you, you know, no sugar. And, and that was the one that most people were, or, or no caffeine, you know, or, or things like that. And they were like, what, what, what do you mean? No caffeine. What do you I mean? what do you mean I can't have my coffee in the morning? And it's like, well, that, that becomes then a need, you know, it's not really something like, and you really don't need it, right. You will survive without it, but mentally, you know, we have yep. those beliefs that we hold that that's what we rely on. That's a codependency, you know, if it's not a, an addiction, it, it does, you know, kind of favor towards codependency and we can be that way with people as well. Oh yeah. You know what I mean? Like it's not just it's not just substance or foods or drinks or anything like that. It can be, you know, um, uh, animals. Okay? we have we have uh, emotional support animals. You know, mm -hmm. just because there's a belief that that does something better for you than you being able to do it for yourself. You know, and and that's just you know my perspective on it. Yeah. No, and and I agree because even things that we could say are positive or healthy in our life could become in this broad term of addiction, uh, you know, a harmful or unhealthy thing, right. you know, um, and, and I'll preface this next statement by saying I, I'm totally in favor of self-help groups. I, I, they are extremely effective, love self-help groups. But I, I've had to work with some people who will substitute their whatever their addiction, you know, was in, in uh, their life. And then they get into the self-help groups and then that becomes their addiction yep. in the sense that, you know, they start going to, you know, like so many self-help groups that they're never home. Yep. Uh, you know, then they start going into many different types of self-help groups. Yep. Uh and again, I'm all for self-help groups and I'm, I'm not, and if you go to, you know, listening and you go to multiple self-help groups, I'm not saying that's bad, I'm not saying that at all. But again, if we're looking at inner peace, which has everything to do with life balance, you know, if my issue say was illegal drugs and I was never home because I was always using those drugs and now I'm not. I'm in self-help, which is an awesome thing to be in, but I'm in so many self-help meetings that I'm never home. Then what's the difference to my family? Well, and, and again, that can be the same for work, right? It can be the same yep. for, you know, what you said in the beginning was, you know, it really takes you out of being present, right? Because you're constantly focused on other things that aren't allowing you to be with what's going on internally. To, to, to help you have the ability to um, change your perspective, to, to understand what you're, you're going through and to figure out what you can do to, um, you know, what tools you can use. Speaking of which, you know, I know that, that you're an expert in this field. So, uh, cause you're so wise, right? Well, <laughs> so, so what I'm are some old. of the things? I mean, like I said, this can be, this is a very broad um, um, subject that we are, you know, the addictions that we have um, are very broad. So what would you say that there are, you know, what kind of tools that, that people can use other than self-help groups? Like what can you do for yourself alone that can um, mm -hmm. assist in, in maybe getting out of that kind of uh, behavior? Well, and, and I think that one thing we have to acknowledge with that is the answer to a question that I, I get posed a lot, that if we're doing a, a broad definition of addiction, then couldn't anything be an addiction? And I typically answer that with yes. You know, if we're using anything that we're doing or ingesting if we're using that as the motive of escaping the present moment, um, then that's probably not healthy and 
if we're continually doing it for that reason, then sure, that could be an addiction, which means anything could be addiction um, if done in, in the wrong way for the wrong reasons. So I think when we look at coping, you know, again, we have to remind ourselves that not only could most of us probably say we, we've been in some ways affected by substance addictions, you know, whether ourselves, family members, close friends. And I think everybody has been um, impacted in some way. But now when we broaden the definition, we can say that probably most, if not all of us, have some sort of addiction ourselves. Right. You know, so when it comes to, you know, like you, you're saying work and um, or play, you know, yeah, or um, exercise. I mean, food, you got it. Ex exactly. Exercise sure. is, is definitely another one. And, you know, and, and, and so really when you come to the coping skills, you, you know, like there, there isn't like a self-help group to say you're exercising too much that I'm aware yeah, of, yeah. <laughs> um, you know, because again, when you look at something like say exercise, if, if you are exercising to a degree that, you know, it's interfering with your job, with, with your relationships, with home life, whatever, then I think the issue is one, the quick thing, change that behavior. So you, you, you just start to cut down you know, so if you're going to the gym, let's say five times a day, you, you know, can you cut that down maybe in a half, right. give or take, um, you know, for the moment. But I think the bigger issue is, is very similar in all of the addictions is to look at the why, the, the motivation. You know, what, what was the purpose of me going five times a day to the gym to begin with? You know, because I don't know now. Exercise, not my thing. <laughs> I will preface that. <laughs> but when it used to be my thing, there was a time in my life it was my thing. I never met a single trainer at, at the gym who would tell anybody to come five days right. or five times in a day, right. uh, you, you know, to the gym. So in that sense, you know, what, what's the reason? What, why do you feel that need is it a compulsion? Is it an escape? Yeah. So I think that's where the, the coping skills really comes in is that first we just change the actual behavior, but we have to look at the why, because if, if we don't answer that question, we're going right back to that. Right. You know, so maybe I can cut down my times at the gym for a few days, but if I've never addressed the, the why I'm, I'm right back at it. Right. No, that's, that's, that's great. What about, uh, you know, I, I know we mentioned support groups, but, you know, um, what about therapies? I mean, because like, here, here's the other thing is like, you know, I have a belief that, that I've seen, I should say, in, in my experience, I have seen people trade one addiction for another, right? You know, oh, and I, I've been guilty of this myself, right? Okay, well, um, let's say I'm, um, you know, I'm not going to drink anymore. Well, I'll start, I'll just smoke more cigarettes, right? Or, or, okay, I, I quit smoking cigarettes. Well, I'll just work more, you know, or even checking your phone, you, you know, like, like, oh, okay, well, I'm bored. I don't have anything to do. Well, let me check my phone again. Or, let me get on Instagram. Let me get on Facebook, whatever, social media addictions, right? And so, so, I mean, is there a, like a cognitive behavioral therapy, you know, if, if you will, that would help, um, kind of break the cycle? Definitely. And I, I like that you brought that one up because that is my favorite. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yes, um, because through now the many decades of me doing this work, <laughs> not just the two that I used to always say, um, Really what, what I, I discovered and, and the basis for those who are unfamiliar with cognitive behavioral therapy very quickly and basically is we're, we're looking at the way we think and that the way that we act, um, our behaviors and which of those are healthy and which of those are unhealthy. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously keep the healthy and then we either reframe the unhealthy or we try to get rid of the unhealthy. Either, either way, it depends on what that is. So. So yeah, in, in a, a very true way, you know, if you catch yourself, you know, 
addicted to something that especially is typically seen as healthy. And, and I'll just use exercise again, because I think it's just ironic that I would never even come close to being addicted to <laughs> exercising. But, um, but, you know, for somebody who is, you know, the hardest part with that is to convince somebody that something so healthy can actually be an addiction. You know, it, it's obvious if we were to say certain foods or sugars or, uh, you know, porn or illegal drugs. I mean, those are like simple. Right. But when you say to somebody, you're doing something that's good for you, you're just doing it in an addictive way. You know, like, well, what does that mean? If it's good for me, it's good for me. Right. Um, so really it comes then into that kind of behavioral of, well, then I need to look at my thoughts and what are my thoughts and how do I reframe those thoughts? Mm. You know, so this is healthy for me. Can too much of a good thing be a bad thing? Right. And some of that is education. I mean, going with the exercise one, you know, we can look at the benefits of exercising and educate ourselves of the benefits but what are the negatives of overexercising? And I know those exist too. Yeah, so that, that really beginning just, to educate oneself. It, it leads to awareness, right? Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, even sometimes, you know, those mental thoughts and, and being aware of what's going on, because when you're in automatic, you're really not aware of, of that. Right. No. And so like, I kind of like to like the analogy of, you know, like watching a movie when you're watching a really, really good movie, you are in the movie. You are like, oh, my gosh, mm -hmm. if somebody comes out and jumps out of nowhere, then I'm going to scream because I'm in this movie. That's how good it is. And then there's those other movies that are kind of like, eh, this is OK, but you could still have conversations. You could still, you know, like you're paying attention to what's going on, but you're not like as affected emotionally if you will in yep. in the in the watching of the movie now that to me is being an observer because we can be an observer of our life we can be a an observer of what's going on in our minds and that really kind of pulls us out of judgment so much when we're mm -hmm. just kind of watching and seeing what's going on and for me that's that was that's huge for anybody who's going through addiction because yep without judgment you know I say that because if, if I know anybody who thinks of an addiction, whether it's substance or, or otherwise, that's a bad word, right? And there's judgment mm -hmm. right there. That's not a positive word in your life. And so if we can do it without judgment, then we might be able to have the ability to go like, okay, I'm not sure that this is the path that I want to take. So maybe we should switch things up a little bit. language and word usage i'm um, sorry you just you blipped out for a minute oh do you have me back yes <laughs> awesome um no, i was just saying it, it's great that you were talking about language and word usage uh because it, it does mean a lot especially when you're talking about more of the cognitive behavioral work um because we're we're going to take words and use their meaning and, and then that's going to affect our lives um and even though I've been saying the word addiction over and over in this, uh, just for the purpose uh, of this podcast, that's a, a word that usually in my daily life and even working with my clients, I'm rarely using that word. Right. Um, because like I say, that word has a, a judgment connotation to it to begin with. Yeah. yeah. And even nowadays, official diagnoses don't use addiction. Um, you know, they, they use substance use, substance abuse, but not addiction. Right. So I, I think, you know, words do mean things, you know, and, and that, that is an important distinction that we're not judging ourselves, especially if we're doing something good, we're just overdoing something good. You know, I, I don't want to judge any, anybody because their actual intentions are probably right deep down. You know, that's why they're doing something good. Right. It's just gotten out of hand for some reason. And that's where you're going to lose your inner peace. Because now if you were chasing a uh, drug or alcohol and now you're chasing something that's positive, uh, you're still 
chasing something and right. and there's no peace inner peace if, if we're chasing things we're, we're not sitting still with ourselves it's so funny um lately I, I had a conversation with a girlfriend of mine and one of the things you know it came up in conversation was about the becoming right you know how most people we're going through our lives and we're becoming more and elevating ourselves and and you know we're becoming but i like to think of it as that we really already are we've always been we're just remembering mm. right and so it's more about waking up to the fact that you already have everything that you need and and that's mm -hmm. my belief because i know some people are like you have to go get it it's outside of you but for me i feel like everything that you experience comes from inside of yourself and you know, I also want to take just a quick moment to applaud all of the people who are going through some kind of recovery or some kind of, you know, support system to, to figure out, you know, mm -hmm. how to change the behavior that they've gone through. Because I know that that's a challenge and a struggle for a lot of people. And, um, you know, there's probably not a lot of people patting them on the back going good job. So I just want everybody, I want them to know that, you know, we're proud of them because this is, mm -hmm. it's a challenge. It is a challenge. I mean, like you talk about our, our listener challenge, that's a challenge <laughs> every second of the day for these people. Oh and, yeah. And um, you know, it affects many, it affects many. And I, and I don't think it's talked about enough in, in a positive because most people, think, oh, well, they'll never change. And I want, I want our listeners to know, no matter what your addiction is, you can change it. You just mm -hmm. have first hold the belief about yourself that you can, you know? So, yep. um, yeah, I think, I think that's very important. So that, that's an awesome point to bring up. And, you know, especially when um, people look at it, addictions from the substance, you know, use, you know, alcohol, drugs, legally legal, doesn't matter. Right. Um, you know, that, you know, people do look at that and say, well, so many people relapse that, yeah, people aren't going to change. You know, um, I, I hear that phrase all the time, once an addict, always an addict. And, you know, to me, I think that that's one of the, the most uh, hurtful put downs, um, you know, that, that we could give anybody. Um, because we as humans are always changing. We, we always have the ability to change, you know, and I mean, the biggest fact is, you know, we've changed from infant to whatever your age happens to be. Right. So, so I mean, right there, physically, we change, you know, yeah. and, and we continue to change. Um, so emotionally, we're doing the same, you know, I mean, for those who say, you know, we can't change. I mean, if you're an adult, does that mean emotionally you're, you're still a three year old? You know, because in, in your mind, then if we can't change, then you should still be emotionally and mentally <laughs> at a very young state. Yeah, right. But you we're not be because we do change and driving and, you know, doing yeah. adulting things. because you changed. Yeah. You know, and, and some of that comes from just pure education. You know, we've gone to school, we've learned things we've. But, you know, a lot of recovery is education. You know, a lot of recovery process isn't just simply going to like support group meetings or meeting with a counselor who does this mumbo jumbo, how you feel and stuff. Right. A lot of substance work and recovery is reading and educating yourself about your body, how it works, how those chemicals work in the body. Mm -hmm. So just like we change from childhood to adulthood through education and experience, no different in, in recovery. Right. You know, they're, they're learning each day by experience, by education, uh, observing others. It, it's awesome work. Um, I was going to say that I also, you know, I believe in unconditional love, right? Mm -hmm. And I also believe in second chances. But I also believe in 500 chances. I believe in, you know, an astronomical unlimited amount of chances. And a lot of people aren't like that. And I understand that. But the reason I feel like I do is because I want to treat other people like I want to be treated. And I know how many yep. times I've fallen on my face, 
right? And, and I have no problems getting myself back up, but I want my support system to be somebody who goes, it's okay, you fell, no problem. Let me help you dust your knees off and, and we'll get back mm -hmm. on the train, you know? And um, if you don't have those kind of people in your life, it's okay to let them go, you know, mm. because some people, it might be parents, it might be friends, it might be, um, you know, people that you're around because of the addiction that you have. But if they're not supporting you in uh, changing something you feel is unhealthy for yourself, then it's okay to let them go. And I think that's really important because, again, sometimes it can be somebody very close to you that makes you feel like or you feel like you shouldn't let go of because they are who they are to whatever title they wear. And um, right. I just want people to know that they deserve that support, you know, mm -hmm. it, you know, and you will find people that are supportive of it. Once you walk away from the people who aren't, you will find yep. new people and, and they will be impactful in your life. And that shows that ability for change, you know, for to understand that if somebody doesn't believe that you can become a better person, regardless of what your past was, mm -hmm. that's not a healthy person to be with, right. you know, because as, as we said, we, we all change and, you know, for, you know, people who will say, well, you know, like once an addict, always an addict, you know, and what's the point? They're never going to get better. You know, one of the other responses I give is, you know, I've been doing this since 1994. Why would I be doing something for so long if it was never effective? Right. You know, so I can attest to, to the thousands, if not more, people that, that I have interacted with, either clinically or, or not, who have gotten better who have changed their lives and, and are continually changing their lives who are productive members of society who you know are, are no different than anybody else you right. know that they fell down they got up the struggle was real and they moved on um now do some people don't get it sure you know, I have some people never gotten recovery and continue to live in, in whatever their addictions are. Sure. I'm, I'm not saying this is 100 percent. Right. But we can't say that it, it doesn't work because I can name you thousands of people that I know. That change works. Right. And, and I'm not just talking substances, you know, I'm talking various addictions. Change works. Um, and if you don't believe change works, then, then, you know, do you believe that you can't change? Right. Well, cheers to you and them for, you know, helping change our world and, and making it a more, uh, peaceful place. Right. And, um, I don't know if anybody can see this, if you're watching us on YouTube. And, I don't know. What do you got there? Oh, and I think that that's a huge part. We lost your audio a second. What, oh, what did you, what does it say? It said you are enough. Oh, you are enough. You are enough. You are enough. Awesome. No matter what you've been through, no matter what you're going through, no matter what you're addicted to, it doesn't matter. You are enough exactly like you are and you are set up for success. So, you know, you know, move forward in a, in a way determined and knowing that you cannot fail. So even if you mm -hmm. slip and fall, you get back up and you keep going. So. It's not about the falling. No. It's about what you do after you fall. Do you stay down or you get up? You know, and that's, that's what it's about. I think that, that even, if, I mean, like you can think of, I can think of many people in business, like, you know, we'll, we'll go with Edison, right? A thousand ways to make a light bulb or that didn't work, right? Or, yep. um, but it, that's it. It's the continual motion of, of trying, of getting back up and doing it over again. And just having that determination to, to be, maybe, maybe you're not currently in that moment, but you could probably imagine what that moment feels like when you're going, when you're complete with your addiction. And I, I encourage people to 
sit with that and imagine what it would be like and, and get the feeling for that kind of life without it. And um, I think that'll lead you towards um, something that you'd be excited about changing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Awesome. I, yeah. I like that. That sounds like a summary. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you guys all for listening. We really appreciate you. And if you have questions or comments and you'd like to chime in on, on this podcast, please send us a message and, you know, we'd love to discuss it with you. Yep. And any ideas you may have for future podcasts, please let us know that as well. Okay. All right, Bye, thanks everybody. everyone.